Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to start with the sternocleidomastoid. This is the muscle that runs up the side of the neck. It's got two heads because it originates on both the sternum and the clavicle, and then it goes up to the temporal bone. And you can see on this model here, we've got the two sternocleidomastoids, and you can actually can move your video over here. You can really see it. Okay. I'm just going to sit here and listen. Okay. We're behaving ourselves because we're being recorded. Okay. All right, so go back to this picture. You've got two muscles here running side by side. Those are the sternohyoids because they run from the sternum to the hyoid. These are the two that are right next to each other on the center of the neck. This guy does not have them. Can we feel it? No, apparently not. All right, next muscle on the list is the masseter muscle. That is the cheek muscle right here going from your mandible up to the zygomatic process of your temporal bone. So, mass eater. Okay. Just think mass eater, because that's what you use to chew. Hmm. All right. Orbicularis oculi is the muscle, the circular muscle around the eyes. Same thing, I can come here to this model. That's the orbicularis oculi. Now, the orbicularis oris is the circular muscle surrounding your mouth, and you'll have it too. Orbicularis oris. I hope those are on the test. Can really? You. you like orbicularis? Uh huh. All right, platysma, that's the superficial muscle on the neck. I like this muscle. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> this covers the sternocleidomastoid. The model does not have it. So, I'm thinking APR. We have one model that has half a platysma. I like the APR. Better. Better. So, model, you mean in like this? Like a uh, mannequin? It's a half a head, uh -huh. a mid sagittal head that has a platysma inside. Huh? Ikabob? It's not Ikabob, no. <laughs> and we've decided this is George. Okay. We name our torso models. It's a, it's a thing of mine. Okay. All right, next muscle, digastric. It's got two bellies to it. There's one, there's the other. So you're going to have this on both right and left sides. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to look at, this is my boyfriend, by the way. Yeah. If you were to look at my boyfriend under his neck, you're seeing the front part of the belly on the right and left sides, and then you can kind of tilt him to see the entire thing. But if you're looking just under the neck, it looks like an inverted V, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's muscle in between that. That's the mylohyoid, which okay. is the next one on the list. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do these three muscles. So on the back of the head, we got just a little bit of occipitalis. On the side, we have temporalis. And in the front, we have frontalis. Have all of those are on there as well. Right. So this what's what's that muscle doing? These uh, muscles? Especially this. Raise oh, your it hair? allows you to like make facial expressions. Okay. Don't get me on video doing that. Though. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just <laughs> and, mother. And chewing also. Okay. Now the frontalis is connected to the occipitalis by this white connective tissue called the gallia aponeurotica. She yes. didn't say, I hope that makes the Gallia test. Aponeurotica. Ga Gallia aponeurotica. Gallia yeah, aponeurotica. Oh, you got it written. Mm -hmm. So that's that white So when they ask for the whole thing, what do you say? If we have a sticker like on the frontalis and on the occipitalis, then we're looking for occipital frontalis. I know, this is so lovely to explain. If we have the muscle, or the muscle, if we have the sticker right there and we say name the specific tissue, mm -hmm. Gallia aponeurotica. I'm spelling it for this one. Okay. So that's that's all of this.